Well, this sower caused quite the scene. Did you read the letter to the editor in the Galilee Times? He writes, Dear Editor, I write to express my deep concern and frustration over the farming methodology of the sower. As a careful and discriminate sower myself, I'm appalled by the sower's lavish and indiscriminate approach to sowing seeds. It goes against every principle of responsible farming. He thoughtlessly flings seeds without considering the quality of the soil or the likelihood of a fruitful outcome. This reckless behavior is not only squanderous of precious resources, but it also undermines the very essence of farming wisdom and prudence. It is a mockery of the meticulous planning, preparation, and thoughtful execution that characterize the responsible work of a true farmer. As someone who has dedicated years to perfecting the art of sowing, I understand the importance of assessing soil conditions, uh, ensuring proper moisture levels, and providing optimal environments for seeds to thrive. Each seed is a valuable investment, deserving a careful consideration and attention. To see them thrown about with such disregard is nothing short of infuriating. We must not overlook the profound impact of this sower beyond the realm of agriculture. It conveys a dangerous message that haphazardly spreading ideas without discrimination or consideration is acceptable. This approach trivializes the importance of knowledge, critical thinking, and responsible dissemination of resources to our community. Sincerely yours, Responsible Sower. Well, this letter of the editor went viral, as you can imagine, and was shared, unfortunately, with the sower's employer, which led to this termination letter. Dear reckless sower, I'm writing to inform you of the difficult decision our company has made regarding your employment. After careful consideration and and through evaluation of your performance, I regret to inform you that your employment with the Nicene Seed uh, is hereby terminated. Over the course of your tenure with our company, we have observed significant disparities between your sewing methodology and the expected standards we have in place. Despite providing you with clear guidelines and instructions, it has become evident that your approach to sowing seeds has been reckless, resulting in alarmingly low yields. We wish you all the best with your future endeavors. Hmm. Well, as uh, bad days come and seem to pile on, it didn't end there the city code enforcement got word also of what had happened. And well, you probably can guess the next email that the uh, sower received. I'm writing to bring to your attention a matter of concern regarding your seed sowing activities within city limits. It has come to our attention that you have been engaging in the practice of sowing seeds without the necessary permits resulting in seeds landing on city property. This violation of local ordinances not only infringes upon the city's authority to regulate land usage, but also poses potential risk to public safety and property. Yikes. Well, if you can believe it, that wasn't even the end of it. Because Jesus retold this sower's sowing as a picture of what the kingdom of God should look like. And yeah, well... Watchdog Nince Vawicki uh, was on the scene to call out uh, in a scroll mail to Jesus. Nince writes, Dear Jesus, I write this letter expressing deep frustration and disappointment regarding your parable. As a conservative watchdog, I believe in upholding traditional values and principles, and I cannot help but feel anger at what I perceive as an intrusion of politics and wokeness into your teachings. Your parable of the sower with its indiscriminate scattering of seeds appears to promote a lack of discernment and personal responsibility. In my view, this goes against the principle of sound judgment and the importance of individual accountability. The notion that all seeds should be sown without consideration for the quality of the soil or the potential outcome seems reckless. Furthermore, I find it troubling that you appear to condone the mixing of religious teachings with political matters. 
I firmly believe in the separation of church and state, recognizing that religious leaders should not wield their influence for political purposes. Your parable, in my interpretation, seems to blur these boundaries and encourage religious leaders to step outside their lane and engage in political activism, like the indiscriminate availability of liberation and resources for all sorts of different types of people. It is disheartening, disheartening to witness religious leaders who are so divisive. You should focus on matters of faith and spirituality instead of partisan causes. This further exacerbates the polarization and undermines the unity that we all desperately need in this moment. Well, Jesus spoke to people from this boat, sharing a parable that would ignite their imaginations and help them envision a world of beloved community, where liberation and justice prevailed. Once in a land marked by oppression and division, there was a bold sower who ventured forth not merely to scatter seeds upon the earth, but to sow the seeds of transformation and liberation. This sower understood the power of love compassion and solidarity, and brought to cultivate a community that would rise above the chains of injustice. The sower went forth sowing seeds of resistance and hope in the hearts and minds of people. The seeds fell not just on the fertile ground, but also on the hardened soil. People were experiencing despair, the rocky soil of prejudice, the soil choked by the thorns of oppression. As the seeds took root, a radical awakening started to happen. The seeds planted in the hardened hearts began to soften, inspiring people to rise up against the injustices that had long kept them bound. The seeds planted in the rocky soil sprouted tenacious shoots, representing the courage and resilience that emerged as people confronted their own biases and dismantled oppressive systems. Even the seeds planted amidst the the thorns of oppression began to thrive as the community united in solidarity. They bravely confronted the forces that sought to divide and dehumanize them. Together they uprooted the thorns and replaced them with a tapestry of love, equity, and liberation. This reckless seed flinging was actually changing the social order of who was in and who was out. The rough places were becoming plain, like Mary once sang while pregnant with Jesus. The harvest of beloved community was bountiful. Boundaries were broken, hierarchies were shattered, and all people found their inherent worth and dignity recognized and celebrated. No longer did injustice prevail, for the community stood united in their commitment to justice, mercy, and compassion. Through this parable, Jesus called upon the people to shift their imaginations and embrace the transformative power of beloved community. It was an invitation to participate actively in the liberation of the oppressed, to cultivate a community that recognized the inherent worth and value of everyone. The sower affirmed that liberation was not just a distant dream, but an achievable reality when people came together in love. It challenged them to envision a world where no one is marginalized, where the chains of oppression are broken, and where beloved community reigns. The sower called us to recognize our role in co-creating a world of liberation and justice, called us to sow the seeds of transformation, nurturing the soil of compassion, solidarity, and equity, and working together to bring forth the harvest. As I imagine this sower walking in and through the varied terrains of our lives, I, I can't help but wonder In contrast, sometimes our own stinginess. The truth is we don't tend to believe that there's enough liberation to go around for everyone. We don't begin with the generous assumption that every kind of soil can benefit from the seed. We don't trust that God's endless ability to soften hard ground, to clear away rocks, and to cut through the most stubborn of thorns can make way for a harvest. 
How I wish that the church with a capital C were famous for being like this sower, going out in joy, scattering seeds before and behind us in the widest arcs our arms can make. How I wish the world could laugh at at Christians' lavishness instead of weeping in the wake of our stinginess. As if liberation is something that can be hoarded. How I wish the people in our lives could see a quiet, gentle confidence in us when we tend to the hard, rocky, thorny places in our communities. Instead of finding us abrasive, judgmental, exacting, and insular. How I wish seeds of love, mercy, justice, and humility, honor, and truthfulness would would fall through our fingers in such appalling quantities that even the birds and the rocks and the thorns and the shallow, sun-scorched corners of the world would burst into colorful, riotous, joyous life. In this time where the world seems to be on fire, What do we need more than a sower who is lavish? A sower who errs on the side of wastefulness. A sower who'd rather lose a bunch of seeds to inhospitable terrain than withhold a single one. The thing about this parable, that at some deep intuitive level, is we recognize its wisdom. Whether we want to admit it or not, we know that Jesus is telling us the truth. We understand that seeds are mysterious. We know that the most elegant and carefully cultivated gardens can fail, and a profusion of weedy, vibrant flowers can push through a crack in pavement. We've seen how new life can spring from the deadest, most shriveled places in our lives, places we've given up on, places we've assumed where heart, that are hardened beyond hope. We've witnessed inhospitable environments being altered by love. We know that joy follows from selfishness and generosity, not from caution and miserliness. In the end... The problem is not our ignorance in the face of this story. The problem is our unwillingness to follow the footsteps of this extravagant sower. His carefree generosity worries us. His seeming wastefulness offends us. Why won't he discriminate? Why won't he wait and withhold at least a tiny bit? Why won't he privilege the terrain that is more deserving of the seed? Because that's not the kind of sower that God is. Look at him. Tossing seeds to the wind with a daring and delighted smile on his face, inviting us to toss our own handfuls across the earth and share his joy. Will we? Let those who have ears hear. Amen.